The Sony FX3 has been out for what, about two years now? So I think it's due for an update pretty soon. So in this video, I wanna talk about things that I would love to see in an FX3 Mark II version. Let's go. What up, y'all? Tight Shirt here, Warford. I'm back for another video. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Hey, remember to be thankful for your life today because you did not have to have it. The Sony FX3 is one of my favorite cameras ever made. I feel like I'm always saying that about cameras, but I just love cameras. But no, the FX3 is actually really, really special. I'm not going to do like a review on this. This has been out for a while. Most of y'all know what the FX3 has to offer. I want to talk about things that I would love to see Sony change like we talked about in the intro with the FX3 Mark II because I'm sure within the next few months it's going to be here. Now, two things, right? First of all, we know when the FX3 Mark II comes that it's going to have Sony's latest and greatest autofocus, artificial intelligence stuff like the a7r5 the zve1 new menus all that good stuff the, the usual upgrades we can expect in the fx3 mark ii so i'm not going to speak on those things the second thing and you need to come a little close for this part sony is not going to put everything that you want from the fx6 and the fx6 mark ii whenever it comes into the fx3 mark ii it just doesn't make sense okay Obviously, they still need product separation. So all of y'all that's saying, I want all these things from the FX6, it's not going to happen. So the things we're gonna talk about in this video are practical things that I think Sony could do with the FX3 Mark II that they need to do to really make it that camera, okay? First of all, let's talk software and firmware, okay? Like I said, we're gonna get all of the new stuff from all of the new Sony cameras, but there's things that the FX3 right now is still missing to this day that it should have as a quote unquote cinema camera. And this thing is actually a true cinema camera even though it doesn't have some of these things. Netflix is certified and people are using this for major production films as A-roll cameras, B cameras, and C cameras. So although it's not the most complete cinema camera out there, it is still a cinema camera in its own right. But even with the updates, we got Cine EI, we got DCI 4K, 24P, all that good stuff. There's still simple things that the FX3 Mark II has to have. Sony, y'all cannot come out with this new camera with it not having things like shutter angle, with it not having things like built-in waveforms and vector scopes and anamorphic D-squeeze support, stuff that all of these other manufacturers, not all of them, but like Fuji, Lumix, that they're putting in their cameras that aren't even cinema cameras that these cinema cameras don't have. We're gonna give the FX3 a little bit of grace because there might be some processor limitation going on because it doesn't have the fastest chip out there, but if Sony puts the new Bionz XR in there with the latest AI joints and all that, there is no excuse for the FX3 Mark II to not have these simple video assist tools that a camera of this caliber in this price range of this category needs. We need to talk about sensor, right? Because Sony is going to, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, some of y'all may or may not disagree. Sony's gonna have to change it up when it comes to the sensor and the FX3 Mark II, which kind of makes me sad because the sensor out of the A7S 3 FX3, FX6 is such a good sensor. It's a 12 megapixel sensor, loads of dynamic range, great rolling shutter performance, great low light performance, but the problem is now all of these other cameras are now coming out with higher resolutions. Even Sony is pushing 8K. They have two cameras in the Alpha line that shoot 8K and with Fuji and Lumix and everybody else at least jumping to 6K, Sony's gonna have to go with at least a 6K sensor in here. So what that means is at minimum, we're gonna need at least a 22 to 24 megapixel sensor. This causes a few problems, unless Sony has some type of crazy witchcraft way to pull this off, right? So once you add in more megapixels, the photo sites become smaller, which means typically worse low light performance. Then once you add in more resolution, to get 4K and 6K, now you got a downsample, which requires more processing power and then introduces things potentially like slower rolling shutter performance and worse low light performance if I didn't say that already. So Sony is gonna have to find a way to be able to put a higher resolution sensor in here, my dog's barking upstairs, but not sacrifice any of those things that we love about the A7S 3 the FX3, and the FX6. The next big thing when it comes to hardware, the screen, 
on the FX3. We can't do this anymore, okay? A camera that costs $4,000 should have at least a decent screen on it. The FX3 screen, I'm sorry, is just not good. Most people buying the FX3 will probably put a monitor on there, but I don't always wanna rig up my camera with a monitor. Sometimes I do rely on the rear display. This is what y'all could do, Sony. Get the display with the display mechanism that flips and does gymnastics and all this stuff with the higher resolution and higher refresh from the A7R5 and put that on the FX3 Mark II. Bang, everybody will be stoked. So we need to upgrade when it comes to the screen. Now the next thing that we need to talk about, and this is again another highly debated subject, should the FX3 have built-in NDs? Would it be amazing to see an FX3 with built-in ND filters like the FX6 does, absolutely. freaking lootly But again, I think we need to be realist, okay? First of all, the size is one of the main appeals, one of the main draws of the FX3. Right now, the only way that you could get an ND system plus real mechanical stabilization would be to make the body bigger. Now, it's not like I would have a problem with that because the FX3 is already a tiny camera, but some people don't like the idea of getting a bigger version of the FX3. I'm curious to know what you might think so let me know what you think about this down in the comments but for us to get built-in nds plus mechanical stabilization sony would have to make the body bigger now another option is for us to get built-in nds and potentially only digital stabilization and still be able to use gyro data and post for catalyst browse that's an option but i think we need to go back is sony really going to put NDs in the FX3 because then that takes away from people who would only be going to the FX6 to get built-in NDs. So would I love to see it happen? Absolutely, but I don't really know feasibly if that's gonna happen at the price point. The next thing I would love to see hardware-wise will be a HDMI 2.1 port. I don't know if other companies are doing it yet. I don't think they are, so it would be nice to see Sony push the envelope on that. And also, I'm gonna bring the top handle over here. Now, the top handle at FX3 is actually great, but it could be updated too, right? So first of all, the top handle it does feel a little bit cheap. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Although it's functional, I like how you can take it off when you don't need a pro audio solution, but you can add it back on to get pro audio, or if you just wanna use it for like handling of the camera. I think they gotta do two things with it. First of all, they need to enable 96 kilohertz. I would love to see, I would love to see Sony a built-in 32-bit float option. Ooh, even if we don't get that, one thing that they could change with this top handle, first of all, make it better quality. Second of all, they gotta make the top handle bigger. Right now, I'm using the Condor Blue handle extension on here, which is actually clutch. If you got an FX3 or FX30 and you haven't picked one of these up, it makes the top handle so much better. First of all, it's more contact, so it's easier to hold. Second of all, it's got mount points on it, so it's got quarter 20 mounts, it's got 3 8 mounts on there, plus a cold shoe mount on there if you wanna you know, put a monitor or something like that on the back so sony and the next top handle if there is a new version we at least need a quarter 20 mount and a cold shoe mount now while i'm taking this back off i would actually love to see a real time code port on it not having to connect something with bluetooth to do time code so that's another thing that they could do with the fx3 mark ii and then lastly i think because i'm doing this off the top of the head so i'm probably forgetting some stuff but lastly although i really like how the fx3 has mount points all over it they're not in my opinion in the best locations most people using the fx3 Three, still have to rig it out because once you put the top handle on there it takes up two holes on the top and the other holes are just not that useful so i would like to see the mount points moved around put in more convenient efficient locations before we wrap this video up i don't know if y'all saw my last video it was actually shot on the fx3 it was about my midlife crisis i'm going through right there i'll put that up there a company called caged the owner saw the video was like yo t we want to make your shirts even tighter it's a supplement company so i'm like okay he like yo here's 200 bucks a 200 discount to go buy whatever you want on our website so shout out to Caged. this is the shirt that came from them the supplements are really good so expect to start seeing mortar supplements on this channel but i just wanted to give you a huge salute man just reaching out saying this was great this impacted my life here's something that we want to do for you in return it was so dope thank you cage aside from those things i think that this is everything that i want to see in the fx3 mark ii these are practical things that i talked about that sony could actually do with the fx3 mark ii that would make it that camera, that would make it a serious contender and make people not want to consider buying any other video camera, even if it's a hybrid camera, I should rephrase, that will make people not want to buy any other camera for video at the price point, right? Because right now, you got other manufacturers like Lumix who are packing things 
at a way less price point that the FX3 should have when it comes to firmware. So Sony's got to get that together. But if they execute the FX3 Mark II right, it could be that game changer camera. So again, because I do this stuff off the top of the head, I probably forgot some things. I'll be upstairs like I'm gonna talk about this, I'm gonna talk about that, then I get on camera and I forget every freaking thing. So if I forgot something or if you have something that you would love to see in the FX3 Mark II, let me know down in the comments. I appreciate y'all support so much. Thanks for showing so much love on the channel. And until next video, I'm out of here. Tight shirt, Terry Warfield. Peace and chicken grease, I'm out. Much love, y'all.